Hi there, this is Bob from Insidium, it's Top Tip Tuesday, and on today's video, we're going to be using Nexus Question to create a self-generating particle tendril rig. This can be driven with fields, and it gives loads of artistic control. So let's get that clock started, and we'll jump into cinema. In our scene, we are emitting particles from this primitive sphere. The sphere has got an X-Particles Collider tag on, and we're going to use NX Question to create this spawning effect. So let's go to NX Question. Let's bring it down. Now we're going to use, let's go to a variable layer, and this variable layer is just going to give each particle a number, and we're going to change that number from 0 to 1 to control effects. It's as simple as that. So the type, we only need integer, which is whole numbers. We need to make it writable and it, uh, for it to be a particle uh, variable, and then you need to give your variable a name. This could be anything. Let's call this spawn and we're putting a value of zero. So all this means is every particle has got a value of zero, doesn't affect anything at this point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use a field to change this value from a zero to a one, simple as that. So let's go to the field tab of our question and we'll bring in a spherical field and let's just get that field and position it over here and just scale it down a bit. So now we're going to ask a question of the field. So if we can hold control and just click on this to uh, make sure it's not highlighted. And then we're going to go to question and bring it underneath our variable. And we're going to say, if the particle is in this field question we want to ask, and let's just say, if the field is greater than zero, which just means if, a, if the particle is anywhere inside this outer part of the fall off, so if it is that, do something. And we want to change this variable value from 0 to 1. So to do that, we just go to Action. And we're not setting color. We want to set the variable. It says, which variable do you want to set? So we need to put the right name in. We called it Spawn, remember. And we'll set the value to 1. So now that's set up, but nothing's happening. All that's, all that's happening under the hood is that each particle's variable of zero, when it goes in that field, it changes to one. But we can use that to trigger effects. So let's go to our NX question. Control, click away from that. We'll close up that one for now. So let's go to another question. And we want to say, if this variable has been changed to a one, do something. So how do we ask that question? Well, we need to go to, it's not the particle category, we need to go to the math category. The data type is a variable data type. We need to type in the name, so spawn. And we want to say, if that variable equals one, that means it's been in the field, then do something. And there's something we want to do, let's do an action. We don't want to set color, let's use set color to see if it's working, hit play move our field, and yeah, look, they've gone yellow where they have gone inside the field. Brilliant, so that variable is working. Let's go back to our question. We don't want to set the color though. What we want to do is spawn. And we can create a spawning emitter. Let's just put that above our other one. And we want to spawn one particle within about quite close, let's just say within 0.3 centimeters uh, we don't want to inherit the parent properties here. We want them to have their own properties. So let's unclick that. We'll give them a full lifespan. We want no speed. Let's give them a radius of three. And we can keep this color on yellow. So now when our parent particles go inside here, we've got all of these particles. And they're continually spawning, but they're just on top of each other, so we can't see them. So now what we want to do is push them apart. So let's go to an NX push, put it below our question. Now, it's, it's very diff you'll get a very different look depending on the position of where this is in your object manager. We want the push for these tendrils to be after the question. So now if we hit play, those are pushing each other apart. If we come here, we're getting these tendrils. Now, we don't want them to be flying apart. Um, at the beginning and the reason that's happening is because by default the NX push is set to an absolute distance of 10 centimeters But we want to use the particle radius. So once we've done that, let's put the strength on full There'll be no pushing apart at the beginning But then as they change and spawn they push away and we create these really cool tendrils. So that's looking great 
couple of things we want to do. Some of the particles which are born right on top of others are being pushed apart and we're getting these single stragglers moving away. And we want to stop them. And we can actually do that with another question. Look, let's go to our NX question. And let's just control click off there. And we're going to ask a neighbor search question. And we're going to say, look, these, these straggler particles have no neighbors in their nearby vicinity. So we can use that data to stop them. And the way we'll do it, let's go to another question, bring it to the bottom. And this question, we're going to say, if the particle, uh, where is neighbor? Neighbors is within five centimeters of any particle, if it's set to less, if there are less than two particles, then do something. And the something we want them to do is to stop. So let's do an action, set speed to zero. Okay, hit play. And now we should have arrested our stragglers. Yes, now we've got no stragglers. Okay, the final part of the puzzle. We want to have these tendrils only grow for a certain amount of time. But if we go to our emitter, our parent emitter, emission tab, take off full lifespan and say they've got a lifespan of 90 frames this will be fine they'll only go so far and die but then they all die so we can't make any more tendrils that's not going to work let's put that back to uh, full lifespan instead we're going to ask one more question in fact we don't have to ask a question we can just add an action and what we're going to do is we're going to take this question here which was if the spawn variable is one spawn particles but we're going to do two more things to this. After the spawn of the particles, we're going to reset the age counter. Let's do an action. Set the age of our parent particles to zero. So it's just reset the age. And we only want to do it once. Set it to zero, and then they'll start counting their age from that point. And now we've reset their age, what we can do is give them a, a new lifespan. So let's go and add another action. And we want to set life to, let's say, 90 frames. But set it once. So it resets their life once they get within the field. And then they start counting their age from there. So now they'll get that new lifespan of 90 frames only at this point. So these ones will then die and stop. But these ones are still alive. And then we can make new tendrils. Fantastic. So there we go. There is our basic tendril setup. And what's cool about these is these are non-intersecting because we're using NX push. And of course, you can get much more sophisticated with this rig, with turbulence and movement and constraints. But there we have done a few different um, Nexus questions to create this really cool procedural tendrils rig.